Bismillahirrahmanirrahim uh, Once again uh, Welcome to uh, Pharmaceutical Excipients So today I will teach you about the Pharmaceutical Excipients That what are the Basic Pharmaceutical excipients which are used in different type of formulations. So, excipient can be defined as uh, these are pharmacologically inactive substances formulated alongside the active pharmaceutical ingredient of a medications. So, whenever we are going to formulate uh, any solid dosage form, it may be in the form of tablet, it may be in the form of capsule or it may be in the form of any solid unit dosage form. So, there must be a need of excipients. So, excipient uh, is a pharmacologically inactive substances which are formulated alongside the active pharmaceutical ingredient of a medications. And they are always present in inactive forms, not in active form. The basic, the fundamental purpose of the excipients is to provide bulk to the formulations. So, it means that excipient they are responsible to facilitate the drug absorption or solubility and other pharmacokinetic considerations. The excipients they are also responsible to aid in handing out API active pharmaceutical ingredient during manufacturings. The fourth purpose of excipients, so it provides stability and prevent it from denaturations. So, as we have discussed that there are certain excipients which are used in uh, different kinds of formulations. So, it, uh, it is not possible that uh, without excipients or active pharmaceutical ingredients, the pharmaceutical ingredients, uh, the formulations if we are going to formulate anything. So, it is not possible to formulate anything without the presence of excipients or active ingredient. Uh, now, look at here so, and next. Uh, uh, this is the ideal properties of excipients. What are the ideal properties of excipients? So, excipients, first of all, excipients, these are pharmacologically and inert substances, these are inactive substances and they are stable for handlings, it must be stable for handlings and it must be cost effective and there should be no interaction with the drugs and excipients it must be feasible so it must be feasible so they are also available these are the ideal properties of the excipients which uh, if uh, these four or five property a substance which possess these four or five properties so it means uh, these are the ideal excipients which can be used in any type of formulation uh, look at here this is uh, uh, a list of pharmaceutical excipient uh, which is used in pharmaceutical preparations usually. Uh, this is the list of pharmaceutical the first one is fillers, binders, disintegrants, coatings, sorbents, anti-adherents, lubricants, gladents, preservatives, antioxidants, flavoring agents, sweetening agents, coloring agents, solvent and co-solvents, buffering agents, chelating agents, viscosity, importing agents and surface active agents 
as well as humectants. So, there are the deference. This is the list of the pharmaceutical excipients which is used in pharmaceutical industries and various pharmaceutical preparations. Uh, the first one is failure. So, what is failure? So, failure can be defined as failure is basic, uh, typically they are also uh, fill out the size of the tablet or capsule making it practical to produce and convenient for the consumer to use. So, pellets it actually fell out, it fell the size of the tablets or capsules especially the solid unit usage forms. Its basic function is it fillers they are add volumes or the mass to a drug substances. So, thereby facilitating precise metering and handling thereof and the preparation of dosage forms used in tablets and capsules. The typicals, now there are some special characteristics of the failures. So, a good failures should typically be anode. So, it must be anecto and it must be compatible with other components of the formulations. It must be non-hygroscopic. So, it does not absorb any moisture from the surroundings and they are relatively cheap. So, they are feasible, they are available and they must be compactable so you can say compactibility as well as they are preferably they are test list or pleasant testings uh, the classical examples of failures that is uh, uh, which I have mentioned here uh, this is plant cellulose uh, dibasic calcium phosphate they are used properly as a failures and uh, different type of formulations especially in tablets and the uh, preparation of and the formulation of tablets or capsule a range of vegetable pads uh, uh, and oils can be used in soft gelatin capsule and other example of failures include uh, you can say uh, lactose uh, sucrose, glucose, mannitol, sorbitol, calcium carbonate and magnesium stearate. So, these are the best examples of failures and they are used in different type of formulations like uh, solid uh, dosage form. Uh, the second excipients uh, that is binders. So, what are binders? Binders uh, actually they are responsible to hold the ingredient and a tablet together. Binders these are those agents which are responsible to hold the ingredients in a tablet together. Binders they are responsible to ensure the tablet and granules can be formed with required mechanical strength and give volume to low active dose tablets. Now, what are the uh, typical feature of uh, binders? Why binders are used and different type of formulations? So, a binder uh, should be compatible with the other products of the formulation and add uh, uh, sufficient cohesion to the powders. Uh, as uh, uh, we are choosing different type of binders uh, to prepare uh, different type of dosage forms, but they must have will have some typical features like this that it should be compatible with the other products of the formulations and add sufficient cohesion to the products. Binders uh, can be classified into different categories uh, uh, according to their applications and there are some examples which I have mentioned here. Solution binders they are dissolved in a solvent for example, water or alcohol can be used in wet granulation process. So, as we have studied in uh, pharmaceutics, the tablet can be uh, manufactured, it can be prepared by three different methods. So, one is uh, compression, 
compression methods uh, the second one is dry granulation and the third one is wet granulations so here uh, the solution binders they are dissolved in a solvents it must be dissolved for example uh, water so waters or alcohol they are used as a binders especially they are used in wet granulation process whenever we are going to prepare tablets by wet granulation methods so there must be uh, you can say uh, uh, there must be a binders and as well as you can say solvent so that uh, binder uh, will be dissolved in the solvent uh, for example uh, these are uh, very clear so examples uh, it include gelatins uh, cellulose uh, or you can say cellulose derivatives polyvinyl pyrrolidone uh, starch uh, sucrose and polyethylene glycol pg so these are different type of uh, binders which are used in different formulations so <coughs> Uh, after that, uh, uh, these are solution binders here. Uh, you can see here that solution binders are dissolved in a solvent. Here is dry binders. So, dry binders are added to the powders blended. So, here uh, we can uh, easily uh, uh, identify that here the solution binders are dissolved in a solvent but here in this case the dry binders they are added to the fodder blends either after a wet granulation step or is a part of a direct powder compression method, method formula for example here in this case examples include cellulose methyl cellulose and polyvinyl pyrrolidone and polyethylene glycol so these are the good example of the binders the third one is disintegrants now what is disintegrate this is another uh, special type of excipients which is always present in an active form so disintegrants these are those substances or the mixture of substances added to the added to the formulations which facilitate the dispersion or breakdown or you can say break up of tablets and contents of capsule into smaller particles for quick dissolution when it come in contact with water and GID gastrointestinal tract so without disintegrants uh, any formulations uh, it may be in the form of uh, tablet capsule or any solid with it form so it become unable to disintegrate for disintegrations uh, the disintegrants they are required to broken downs or you can say to facilitate to broken down the tablet or their contents into the smaller particles so here the disintegrants uh, these are those substances or the mixture of substance which are added to the formulations drug formulation that can facilitate the dispersion the breakdown of the tablet and contents of capsule into smaller particles for quick dissolution when it come in contact with the water and the GIT so disintegrants they are used in a formulations uh, for what purpose in order to broken downs in order to break up the tablet in the contents the smaller particles to how uh, there are different type of tests which are performing quality controls uh, that may be physical just like disintegration test as we have we, we are performed for different type of tablets for coated uncoated uh, and you can say entity coated or sugar coated tablet and they have different uh, disintegration time uh, th what are the ideal properties of disintegrants what are the ideal properties of disintegrants so disintegrants uh, uh, these are the good hydration they have good hydration capacity poor solubility and poor gel formation capacity these are the ideal properties of the disintegrants 
it has the capability of it has the capability of hydration good hydration capacity so as well as poor solubility and poor gel formulations formation capacity the best examples of disintegrants are polyvinyl pyruridones carboxymethyl cellulose and sodium starch glycolates uh, so we have discussed about the uh, three uh, different types of you can say uh, we have discussed about three different types of, uh, of uh, excipients uh, which are used in various formulations uh, and next lecture I will discuss about the uh, other uh, excipients which are used in different type of formulation.